And Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through Wormspan. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Wormspan. Wormspan is designed by Connie Vogelman and it is published by Stonemeyer Games and I pre-ordered this game as soon as I saw it. Yeah, I had to pre-order it right away. I also have it with the deluxe components. So the components you'll see during the playthrough are a little more deluxe than you'll get in the base edition. So just bear that in mind. But Wormspan is a spiritual successor to Wingspan. It is a tableau engine building game where you're going to be excavating caves and bringing dragons into those caves, giving them homes to lay eggs and that sort of thing and in the solo mode here you're going to be playing against an AI there's two different AI modes I will be playing the ravel mode on level one and so whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win and so let's go into setup here and so first you'll need a player board and so we'll place it right here next you'll need the round board the dragon guild board and the card board and so we'll place them kind of like this then you're going to choose one of the guilds at random. And so today I have the Guild of Seafarers. Make sure to place it on the two to three player side because you're going to be setting up for the AI and that's the second player. So it'll be a two player game and we'll place it right here. And then you'll shuffle up the dragon deck and then you're going to draw three dragons straight into the spots here. You'll do the same for the cave cards, drawing three into these spaces here. Then you'll add the round marker on the round tracker here. And then you're gonna shuffle up the objectives, draw four, kind of randomly choose the sides on them because they're double-sided and place them in their spaces here. And then you'll choose player colors for the AI and for yourself. I will be yellow, the AI will be blue. You're gonna put four of your markers over here and then a four of them right here. And then you're gonna give the AI one on the dragon guild and then three on these spaces right here, as well as four on the side over here. Then you'll take the guild markers, these little ones that are shaped like a dragon's head, and you'll place them on the start position here. You'll place your meeple in the base camp here, and then you can use the AI's meeple if you want, and you just place it right here to remember which color the AI is, because for whatever reason, I may forget that. And then you'll choose a level for the AI. Now I have the Ravel mode that I'm doing. And so for the Ravel mode, you have to use these specific cards for the AI. There's eight cards. So you need Ravel cards one slash four, two, three slash six, and eight. And so you're gonna add them to this deck and you'll see on the bottom right hand corner of each of these Automa cards, they'll have those numbers. And so you'll add all those Ravel cards plus the regular four, five, six, and seven cards into this deck. You're gonna shuffle this deck like so, and then you're gonna draw one card off the top and place it here, and then place the deck right next to it. Next up, you're gonna give yourself six coins, and then you're gonna give yourself one egg. The colors of the egg do not matter, they're for aesthetics only. And so you're gonna place the egg right here where it says store eggs. It says store two eggs here, but you only start with one. Then you're going to draw three cards of each type and choose four of these to be your starting hand. And so I will do that a little bit later after I explain the rules of the game. On top of that, you're going to gain three resources at the start of the game so you can consult your cards first and then decide which three resources you want to gain. Now resources are always referred to these four types here. We have the gems, the milk, the gold, and the meat. And so this symbol down here always refers to a single resource for each symbol you see, and it's any one of those four resources. Eggs and coins are never considered resources. But I will be deciding those resources later after the rules teach when I choose my cards. And so that's it for setup. Now the goal of Wormspan is to get the most points. And so you're gonna be competing against the AI for points, and so the way you're gonna gain points in the game is first, you'll gain points from placing tokens here on the guild. And so the guild has spaces for points. So you'll see the bottom one here shows that you will gain six points if you have a token here or three or one here. And this one here says gain three victory points for every filled column of dragons. I'll explain that a little bit later, but if you have tokens here, you'll gain points for that. Then you'll gain points for any dragons in their caves. And the points are shown in the upper right hand corner on a dragon card. Then you'll get points for any dragons that have the flag ability, it's the end game bonuses, and I'll explain those shortly. Then you'll get one point each for your eggs on your player mat, for any cached resources, and for any tucked cards. And then you'll get points from the public objectives here, which we'll talk about shortly. And then you'll get one point for any remaining coin, 
or one point for any combination of resources and cards at the end of the game. And so you're going to total that and compare that to AI. The AI scores differently, which you'll see at the end of this playthrough, but it's fairly straightforward. They're going to score points for their cards and for their position on the guild track and for any public objectives that they earned and that sort of thing. In the Ravel mode, they'll also score if they have any tokens in this bottom area here. And the game ends after four rounds and then you go into that final scoring. Now, before we talk about the rules of the game, I would first want to address the anatomy of cards. So you have dragon cards here. And the first thing you're going to see, of course, is the name. And then you're going to have the cost in the black banner here. So in this case here, this one actually costs a silver coin. And then you're going to have the position by which this card can be played. And so if you want to add it to your dragons, it can only go in those positions that are highlighted. So you'll see on some of these other cards here, that they can't go in certain areas. So this one can only go in the red area. This one can only go in the purple area. And this one can only go in the yellow area. And so those areas are signified here as well. And you'll see their positions reflected on the card. So the red is the top area, whereas the purple is the bottom area. And then in the upper right hand corner, we have the point values for those cards. And then we have any egg nest that you can lay eggs on. Now most cards have egg nests, but you'll notice that hatchlings do not. And that's because they are too young to have egg nests. And then you'll have the size of the dragon. And so there's, you know, hatchlings, small, large, medium. And so that will be, will be referenced by other, you know, cards and effects. So do keep that in mind. And then we have their mood. And so this one says aggressive here. There's another aggressive. There's a playful one here. And so once again, those will be referenced by other cards and effects. And then last on the bottom here, we have their bonuses. And I'll go over the bonuses when it comes to enticing dragons into your cave. The anatomy of the cave cards is very simple. The cave cards are always, when you play a cave card, you're going to get a bonus. And I'll talk about those more when we do the excavate action. All right, so the way the rounds work, every time you have a turn, you're going to choose one of the three actions to do, and then it'll go to the AI, and then back to your turn, until you run out of coins or pass, and then, of course, until the AI passes as well. And then we'll go on to the end of round, and then we'll start a new round and continue until the game ends. And so on your turn, you have three actions you can do, and each action costs a silver coin. Now, excavate here tells you that to excavate, it costs a coin, and then possibly a cost printed on the column. And so what Excavate does is allows you to take one of your cave cards and play it out in your cave. Now you start off the game with three excavated caves. And so you don't have to excavate these, but you do have to excavate these because the, the reason why you want to do that is so that you can play dragon cards. And you can only play dragon cards in excavated cave spaces. And so when you play one of these, you just play them into the leftmost available space in any one of the three rows. But if you are playing into the third column, it'll cost an egg as shown at the top here, or the fourth column will cost two eggs. You just remove any eggs, you know, for that cost from anywhere on your player map. And then you play the card into that cave. And so in this case here, if I played this one, it would just go right here. Now, anytime you play a cave card, you always get an instant bonus. The little symbol here, on the bottom left here, that refers to laying down a card and gaining an instant bonus. You'll see this on some dragons, but they're always on cave cards. And so they have a variety of effects. You know, this one here says you immediately play a dragon card with a discount of one egg or one resource. And that discount is referring to the cost of the dragon that is printed in the upper left hand corner. I will remind you that coins are not resources, so it would not discount this particular dragon here. Then we have other abilities that you just gain stuff. So this one says you gain one meat and one dragon card. Now, anytime you gain a card, you can either gain it from the display or from the top of the deck, unless it says otherwise, because sometimes effects will say gain it from the display or sometimes it'll say draw from the top of the deck. And the same thing goes for the cave cards as well. And then this last one here, this one's an interesting one for the solo mode. So it says, up to three times, pay a resource to gain a movement on the guild track. We'll talk about that in a sec. It says each opponent may do this one time. Any type of card like this, where it says each opponent, the AI never benefits from that. So you don't even have to worry about that. So you just get the bonus and that's it. And there's a whole bunch of others. Sometimes you'll gain a resource and lay an egg. Anytime you lay an egg, you're going to place it on one of your nest icons. And again, some of the dragons will have a nest icon that tells you how many eggs that they can have on their card. Now, anytime that you excavate into the fourth space here, the fourth column, you have the option in that moment 
to do a special bonus. And the special bonus is that one time, you can only do this one time, you can spend a combination of three resources and cards. Again, the resources re refer to the four resources, not coins or eggs. And so again, you spend three resources or cards or a combination thereof to gain a coin. And this is particularly powerful because when you're gaining coins, you're basically gaining extra actions. And so you'll be able to do that in each of the three columns one time in the game as you excavate those spaces. And so that's it for the excavate action. And so let's move on to the entice action. Now the entice action also costs a coin and it costs the printed cost on the dragon that you're trying to entice. Because enticing means that you're gonna play one of your dragons into one of the excavated spaces that is on your player map. And so you'll choose one dragon and pay the resource cost. And so some of these like this one of course has a coin cost and this one has an egg and two milk or you know a variety of other resources. Now once again you're gonna to have to remember that each dragon can only be played in certain caves, so do keep that in mind. And so when you pay the cost, you'll lay the dragon down into one of the spaces. Now some of the dragons have different abilities. The ones with the little meeple symbol here, the little explore token, that augments your exploring action, and I'll show you that shortly. The ones with the flags will give you end game scoring bonuses, and so each one is different, and I'll, I'll explain those as we go in the playthrough. And then this one here, with a little clock on it, has an end of round bonus. So you get this at the end of a round, you'll see on the round tracker, it says to activate those clock abilities at the end of every round. And so on this one here, it says to gain one milk and I may cash it onto any dragon. When you cash an item, you just basically take that resource and place it on a dragon and it will forever remain there until the end of the game when you score it. Each cached item is worth one point, so do keep that in mind. Now this one here says you may cash it onto any dragon, and there are dragons that actually benefit from caching things. And so like this one here, it says cash a milk from your supply here. Anytime you cash a milk here, gain on the guild track. And so I also want to talk about this hatchling because it has this added ability, and this goes with all hatchlings, they have a bonus at the bottom. When the third milk is cached, also gain this. And so in this case, it's two gold. But there are other you know, hatchlings that do different things, like this one here has tucking cards from your hand. And so you just take a card from your hand, you tuck it underneath, and then you'll gain a bonus. In this case here, each tucked card here is worth an extra point at the end of the game. And it says when the third card is tucked here, also gain on the guild twice. And so that's for tucking cards. And so each hatchling has their own bonuses and their own you know, bonuses for tucking uh, or caching, as well as gaining a bonus when the third thing is tucked or cached. And so I will line these up here and show you shortly why these might be powerful. And so that's the entire action. All it is, is paying a coin, paying the cost of a dragon, and playing the dragon, and that ends your turn. And so let's now move on to the explorer action. The explorer action lets you activate any explorer symbols in your caves. You'll choose one cave to activate, and the cost to explore each of those caves is shown here. And so the first time you explore one cave, it'll cost a coin. And then the second time you explore that same cave, it'll cost a coin and an egg. And then the third time you explore the cave, it'll cost a coin and two eggs. And so you're just gonna track those by placing you know, the coins there, just like that, and then placing an egg like that. Now each explore takes a turn, so do keep that in mind. But when you explore, let's say I decided to explore the Amethyst Abyss down at the bottom here. If I decided to explore down here, what you do is you take your meeple and you'll start by placing it above the first explore icon that you see. And so the one down here at the bottom here, it says gain a cave card. And so what you do is you choose one of the cave cards in the display or choose one on the top of the deck. And so once you've done that, you move on and then look, this dragon has an explorer icon. So I get to activate that dragon and it says gain a milk. And so I'll gain it from the supply here and then it says I may cash it here but I don't want to cash it here. I want to hold on to this milk because I want to actually cash it on here. So we'll wait and we'll move on to this next spot. Next spot, all these spots here says gain on the dragon guild. But again, we'll talk about that in just a moment. And so we'll move on to the next one here and it says cash a milk from your supply here. And so you take that milk from the supply that I just earned from that guy, placing it on here and it says anytime you cash here, gain on the guild. 
And again, when the third one is cashed here, also gain that bonus. Now I do want to say with these hatchlings, that third one bonus is only one time. So it's not every three times you cash on there. It's just the one time that you reach the third time. So you can keep cashing on, on these dragons over and over again, but it's just that third time that you cash on there, that's when you get that bonus and it won't ever happen again. And then you keep exploring. Now this one says to gain another cave card, but then you have to stop your exploration as soon as you get to a stop sign. You'll see these stop signs here. See, stop signs get covered up by the dragons. And so the more you, you know, bring dragons into caves, the more the stop signs get covered up and the more exploration actions that you have. So it's really good to bring in dragons, allowing you to make your explorations really long and give you all sorts of bonuses. Now at the end of each of these rows, there's special exploration actions that tend to correspond with what you're doing during these explorations. And so these are really good. Like this one here lets you cash up to two resources from your supply onto any dragons. And that's not in that row, it could be anywhere. So I could, you know, cash them onto here and gain those bonuses. So that could be really good. This one here lets you tuck up to two cards under any dragons. Again, any dragons. So if there's a dragon that has bonuses from tucked cards like this one here, which gives extra points for tucked cards at the end of the game, then you could tuck the cards there. And you'll see that, you know, these rows are gaining those things that you might spend later. So as you're exploring here, if this was completely filled up, you'll actually gain two dragon cards before you get to that space to which you can tuck those two dragon cards under that card. And the last one here is discard up to two cave cards from your hand and lay two eggs for each of those. And so again, eggs are worth a point each at the end of the game, so they're really good. But just bear in mind, you have to have nests for them. All right, so now let's talk about the Dragon Guild because the Dragon Guild is really important. As you gain the Dragon Guild, the Dragon Guild is shown by that brown shield with the dragon in it. Anytime you gain one of those icons, you're gonna move one space clockwise on this track. Every time you enter into a space, you'll gain that bonus. So you'll see various bonuses around here. We have eggs, resources, cards, and then we have even a silver coin over here, but we have these brown spaces here that say place an unused marker above. And so you have four markers here that you can place throughout the game and the max is four, so keep that in mind. But every time you enter in one of these brown spaces, you'll take one of your markers and you'll place it in an empty space shown on here. It's up to you where you wanna place it. You can place it in one of the four spaces down here that give points or you can place it in one of these three spaces up here that do things. And so the first one here says you can excavate a space for free with a cave card from your hand. And so that's really nice because it won't cost a coin as normal excavation does, and it won't cost eggs if you excavate into the third or fourth column. Next one here says you can pay a card, which is to discard a dragon card, then play a dragon from your hand for free. And so that can be really good, especially with dragons that cost coins. This next one here gives you a silver coin and then you gain two dragon cards. And so some of these spaces have multiple spaces like these two here, whereas the points down here, the first one gives six points, the next one gets three, and then as many people as put uh, tokens here will gain one point each for those tokens. And again, the AI can gain tokens in these areas, so do keep that in mind. So moving around the guild track, is really good and you can keep moving around getting bonuses even if you place all four of your markers. All right, so that's pretty much it for actions. There's a couple other things you need to know. At any time, you may convert two resources for one resource of your choice. Again, resources do not count coins or eggs. And then at the end of your turn, you have to discard down to nine total cards, nine coins and nine resources. You can't carry over anything beyond that at the end of your turn. And so now let's talk about the AI's turn. The AI's turn is super simple. So the AI has its own deck of cards with different actions on them. And so let's talk about some of these actions. So this one here is really straightforward. Now, first of all, you have this icon in the upper corner here. And what that signifies is if this is the last card drawn from the AI's deck, in other words, if I had placed it here, it was the final card, you know, I'd, I'd drawn it from the deck, it was the final card, that signifies that the AI is gonna pass and not do an action that turn. And so that happens kind of about half the time. So the AI is gonna you know, have seven actions half the time and six actions half the time, you just never know. It depends on the last card draw. So that icon only matters for the final card in the AI's deck. Then you have some information here. 
here and here. And so the first information here is it'll tell you whether it's refreshing any cards over here. And so in this case here, it doesn't. This one here with the silver coin, what that means is that you're gonna take a silver coin and I advise keeping three or four of them over here for the AI and you'll place it on the current objective of the current round. And so if this was round one as it is, you would place it on this objective. And this is gonna help the AI when it comes to competition for those objectives, which we'll talk about shortly. And next in this diagram, we have the AI moving around the guild track. And so it depends on which round it is. So you just, you know, figure out which round you're at. And so we're in round one and it tells you to move the AI's token one space. And so you just move it like this. Now the AI never gains resources or eggs or anything like that. It's only concerned with reaching the brown spaces. And so as it moves around, it's going to reach the brown spaces. And if after this movement, it has reached or passed a brown space, you're gonna check the bottom here. It says, if brown space, and then it's gonna tell you what it's gonna gain. Sometimes it'll gain cards, or sometimes it'll gain cards and a place down a token. And so when it gains the cards, the number tells you which number card it is. And so these are ones, twos, and threes. And so in this case here, it wants the number one dragon and number one cave. And so you'll take those and you'll place them in the AI's area. They will score these at the end of the game. And then at the end of the AI's turn, you'll replace those cards. I didn't mention this before, but the, at the end of your turn, you'll replace those cards as well. You never replace the cards mid-turn. So do keep that in mind if you're gaining a lot of cards. You only have three to choose from that are face up, and the rest will have to come from the top of the deck or however you choose to do that. Now these are the regular AI cards as signified by the number that it does not have the purple and does not say an R next to it. So we have the Ravel cards, which are different than the regular solo mode. So in the Ravel solo mode, the AI is gonna move on the guild track in comparison to where you are on excavating. So there are two different symbols for this. So we have this one here and this one here. And what it's telling you is it's gonna move on the guild track by the number of excavations that you have the most of. So let's say I had excavated these three spaces here, then the AI would check, and that's my most excavated spot, it's gonna go ahead and move three spaces on the guild track, like so, one, two, and three. The other one here has the AI moving on the guild track, corresponding with the least amount of excavation you've done in one of your caves. And so it'll always be a minimum of one because these three here count as excavated spaces, even though they're printed on the board. And so if you haven't excavated in any one of your caves, then it'll only move one space. But let's say I had excavated here, here, and here, that is the, not only the most, but also the least amount of excavation I've done, and so it would move two spaces. And so I'll show you a couple of these other symbols here. We have the symbol that's showing refresh the dragon cards. So at that point, you would discard all three dragon cards from the display and draw new ones. This one here has you taken a coin off of the objective, and so you just take it right back off, and so that's pretty much it for the AI's cards. And you'll see that in action as we play. And so once again, you're gonna take the first turn, then the AI is gonna go, you'll draw a card for the AI and you'll go back and forth until you both pass. And so the AI again is going to either pass when it runs out of cards or when you flip over the card and it has the pass icon on it. So let's flip over this card and see what it is. And it has no icon. So that means it would do this final action and then it would pass at the end of that. And so at the end of the round, the first thing you're gonna do is discard any coins on your player mat and any eggs you use to explore. And then you're gonna activate any end of round effects. And once again, the end of round effects are the little clock here. So if you have any of those dragons out on your board, you would activate those. And again, in this situation here, it says gain a milk and I may cash it onto any dragon, which means I could cash it onto this hatchling here and which gives me a movement on the guild anytime milk is cashed here. So then I can move on the guild and get a bonus and all this could happen while this is you know, going on at the end of the round. And then the next thing we're gonna do is score the objectives. And so let's talk about these objectives here. And so the first one here is we want large dragons on our player mat. And so once again, the size of a dragon is gonna be shown in the upper right hand corner. So you just count as many as you have. Now you're gonna be comparing this to the AI's amount. If the AI has any coins on here, you'll add that to their amount, but their amount is listed here at the bottom of the objective tile. And so it's listed by round number. So the first number is for the round one and you know, round two, round three, and then round four. 
So in this case here, in round one, the AI has zero dragons, zero large dragons, unless of course it has a coin on here then it would have one dragon. Or if it had three coins on here, it would have three dragons. And so you just compare that to your total. If you tie with the AI, you're gonna get the same amount. If you have less than AI, you're gonna get the second place. If you do not have anything that qualifies for this objective, in other words, if I did not have any large dragons in my display here, then I would actually get a zero. You get the last place on that. So you do have to have at least one of whatever the objective is looking for. The next one here is dragons and cave cards in your Crimson Cavern. Crimson Cavern is the red one here, so you count all dragons and cave cards. Even if you have a dragon, you know, covering up a cave card, you don't have to look to verify there's a cave card because you can't play a dragon unless there's a cave card. So in this case, there would be one, two, three. Next one wants playful dragons. Again, you're gonna to refer to the mood of the dragon, which is shown in the bottom right, and I have two playful ones down here. And then the last one here is dragons with instant abilities, you know, card laying abilities or end of round abilities on your player mat. And so that's how that works and we'll score each one of those according to the round. So the first round will be the large dragons and then moving on. And so after you score those, you'll take this cube that is shown over here and give it to the AI in the dragon guild. Now it has one more cube to use. If it ever enters or passes a brown space and it doesn't have any cubes, it won't place one. It just ignores that. And then you're gonna refresh all cards on the display. So you discard all three dragon cards and cave cards and draw new ones. Then you'll gain six coins and one egg. And one other thing to note, if you carry over more than two coins at the end of a round for the solo mode, you'll actually discard down to two. You can't carry over more than two. So do keep that in mind. Now I tend to play in a way that I don't ever carry any over, but that's just my play preference. All right, so we are ready to start the game. And so the first thing that we need to do is, you know, look at our dragon cards here and our cave cards and see what we got and then pick out the three resources that I get to start the game with. And so let's see, we have the Dappled Glade Spirit. And so the Dappled Glade Spirit, it costs a silver. And so I don't know if I want to spend a silver coin on it. And then it costs a meat and a gold. And this is an end game dragon, so it gains one point for each dragon that has an explore action on my player mat, including hatchlings. So that can get me a lot of points. I kind of want to keep that around, but I don't know. Let's see what else I have. We have the weary griff dragon. And so this one here, it costs a meat, a gold, and a, a gem. And it's a large one too, so I may want this one. And it says, gain two victory points if this dragon is between two other dragons in this cave. Oh, so I want this to be the second dragon. <laughs> so I don't know about that. And then this last one here, it only costs a gold and it has an explore action and says reveal a card from the deck. If it is medium or large, tuck it here, otherwise add it to my hand. So that could help me get a lot of dragon cards. I kind of think I should go with these two. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do, you know, because the one is large and we're trying to go for large dragons for the objective. So I'm gonna discard this one. Now I could keep all three if I really wanted to and just get one cave, but I tend to go with two cave cards and two dragon cards. All right, so let's see what else we have here. We have one here that gains on the guild and lays an egg. So I definitely want that one. I like moving around on the guild. This one says up to three times pay a resource to lay two eggs. That's kind of nice to get a lot of eggs, but I don't know about that one. This one here says pay two resources, then gain a cave card from the display and immediately play it for free. So that is nice in that it, you know, it doesn't cost a coin to you know, play that action. However, it's gonna have me excavate more, which I'm not sure I wanna do, but I think I will take that over this one. All right, so with these dragons in hand, I need some resources. And so I'm gonna gain two gold and one gem. So those are gonna be my starting three resources. All right, so we are ready to go here. And the first thing I wanna do is build this guy. And so I need to entice, and entice costs a coin, and then the printed cost of the dragon, and that is one gold, so we'll pay that. And then I get to add it, and it only goes in the golden grotto, the middle area here. And so we just place it in here. Again, this is already pre-excavated, so that is possible. And so that's it for my turn. Now we go on to the AI's turn. We'll flip over the card here. And so there, it does nothing in these spaces here. All it's gonna do is move on the guild track. And I did forget to reset this, but it's gonna move one space here. Again, the movement is shown by the round number and the movement underneath. So in this case here, it moves one space, whereas if it was round four, it would move two spaces. All right, so it's back to my turn. 
and I think at this point I need to excavate so I can, you know, fill this out here. But before that, I think I'm actually going to explore. And so I'll explore the golden grotto. So again, you take your meeple here, you place it right here, do the first explore action. The first explore action has me gaining a card. And so I can gain one from the display or I can gain one from the top of the deck. Now I do like this one here. This one goes in the golden grotto and you know, it gives me five points if I have four dragons in my golden grotto. And I think I can pull that off. That's a lot of points. It's also playful, which goes along with this objective here. So that kind of helps me out ahead of time. So I think I'm gonna take this one. And then next up, we have an action that's actually on this dragon. It has an explorer action as shown by the icon. I re reveal the top card of the deck. And if it is a medium or large, I tuck it there. Otherwise, I gain it to my hand. And it's a hatchling. Hatchlings are great. I love hatchlings. The bonuses that you get are really good. And so I think I will try and build this hatchling, well, entice that hatchling into the bottom cave here because that's where it goes. And then last, we move on to the gain a guild. And so we'll move up one space. And in this space here, we gain an egg. And so we'll just take any one egg. Again, color doesn't matter. And so we'll place it right here. And so now we've hit a stop sign as shown here. And so I can't move any further, we go back to base camp. And that's gonna end my turn. So we move on to the AI's turn, we're gonna draw a card. And so now it's gonna add a coin to the objective. So it'll gain one here. And then looking at this, it's gonna move one space on the guild track and that is it. We're on to my turn. I did forget to draw a new card. Again, you draw new cards at the end of your turn. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this is one small detail that I forgot to mention, but this card here had to have been discarded. See, any card that refers to another opponent, in this case here, it says, if you have at least as many dragons in your Amethyst Abyss as your left neighbor, there is no left neighbor in this game, in the, in the solo mode. So any of those cards automatically get discarded and get redrawn. So even if you draw one into your hand from the deck, you would discard it and draw a new one. You will not use those cards in the solo mode. So we will have drawn one here. All right, and so now I'm going to excavate. And so we're gonna excavate into this space here. It doesn't have any additional cost because there's no egg cost up here. If it was the third column, it would. And so I'll place it right here. And so when I play it, I gain on the guild one space. So I'll move up one space and that gains me a meat. And that's gonna help me with my weary griff dragon. And then I get to lay an egg. And so we're gonna add an egg right onto this dragon here. It has one space for one. And that's gonna end my turn. Now we move on to the AI's turn. And so let's see, they're gonna refresh all the dragons. So all of these are gone. And then we're gonna draw three new dragons into this area and hopefully we're gonna get something good, you know, something that I'll want to draw. And then the next part of the AI's turn is it's gonna move on the guild track as many spaces as I have my, my highest excavation. So I've excavated twice here. Again, the first one starts excavated. This is one more. So it's gonna move two spaces like so. Now it didn't enter in, into any brown space, so we don't have to worry about that. We move on to my turn. And so with my turn, I'm gonna spend one coin to entice. I'm gonna entice this one into this cave here, and that's gonna cost one gold to do so. Now it's the AI's turn, and let's see. They're gonna get rid of the coin that they had put on the objective earlier, and then they're gonna move up on the guild track two spaces again. That's the max area of excavation that I've reached. And now they've reached the brown space. And so you're gonna consult the card here. The card says that he's gonna gain one dragon and one cave, well, number one. So again, these are one, two, three. So he'll gain this first one here and this one here. And you just add them into a pile over here and then you immediately draw new cards into those areas. Well, I made a suboptimal move by playing this here. I probably should have waited on this one. That's gonna cost me because I'm gonna do an exploration action into this area here just to gain one resource. That is awful, I should never do that. And so I'll gain one gold here. Then we go back to the AI's turn and let's see, they're gonna refresh all the dragons. So once again, all these are gonna get discarded and we'll draw three new ones. And then it's gonna add a coin to the objective and then it's gonna move one space on the guild track. All right, so for my last action, I'm gonna entice once again. I'm gonna have to pay the cost on this card, which is all three resources that I have. And then we'll place it right here. And now, of course, I'm not gonna get this end game bonus because it's not between two other dragons in this cave, but maybe I can move it later. Sometimes there are cards that let you move cards, but it is a large dragon and that's what I needed 
because that's going to count towards that objective. Again, you need at least one thing on that objective in order to, you know, gain the bonus. And so that's what I needed. All right. And so now it's the AI's turn and they're going to get rid of that objective coin that they just put there. They're going to move twice on the guild track, one, two, and then that's it for them. Now it's my turn, but I have no more coins, so I can do no more actions, so I have to pass for the round. We go back to the AI's turn, and we're going to check. This is the last card drawn, so we look up here. It says that they're going to pass, so you ignore this action here, and that's going to end them, and they're going to pass for the round, and so we're done for the round. All right, so at this point, we discard all six of our coins, and since we're going to gain six later, I'm just going to place them all right here. Then we're going to activate any round of, end of round effects, and I don't have any on my cards. Then we're going to score for the objective. Now, again, you're going to look for the AI's score. It's going to be any coins that are on here, and the number that corresponds to the round. Again, the leftmost number is for round one, whereas the rightmost is for round four. And so it has zero large dragons. And so it's not going to score for this one, but I am. That's going to be really good because I have one large dragon, so I'll gain four points for that. And again, since the AI didn't have more than zero, it scores zero for that. And for whatever reason, I had left the extra marker here. This marker was supposed to go from here to here during this time. And so, yeah, now it has two markers. Sorry for that. <laughs> that was probably confusing earlier. But then we're going to discard all the cards from the display here, every single card, and we're going to draw all new cards. And then we'll gain our six coins, which we've already gained. And we get to gain an extra an egg. And so we'll add it here. All right, so we're moving the round tracker on to round two. Now we're gonna score for cards in the Crimson Cave. And so I want cave cards and dragon cards in here. So we're gonna have to expand that out a little bit. And then we're gonna take the AI deck. Now the eighth card that we had discarded at the beginning of the game, we're gonna shuffle this in together and then we'll draw the first card and place it down there, the deck right next to it, and we're ready to go. All right, so for my first turn, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do because I need resources. I don't have resources. I probably need some more cards. So I guess the best bet for me to do is to explore right now. And so we're gonna explore here. I get to go to this space and gain a resource and I'll gain a milk for that. And then we move on. There's no exploration ability on this dragon. We move over here, moving up on the guild track one space and gaining a dragon card. And so I can take it from the display or from here. And so I think I'll take this dragon here. And the reason why is because it's playful. Again, that's gonna help me with scoring for the objective. So I think that's a good shot. And I could probably entice it next round unless I decide to wait and entice the kindly sea serpent. So either the miniature Rex or the kindly sea serpent, we'll see. And then we replace the card in the display and now it's back to the AI's turn. All right, so we're gonna draw a card and let's see, they're gonna refresh all the dragons. So those all, all go goodbye. And then the AI is gonna move up twice on the guild track. So one and two, and that's it. And now back to my turn, I think I will entice that dragon. And so this one's gonna go in this space here. It's in the purple area. And so it'll cost me one milk and one egg. And then that's gonna end our turn. Move on to the AI's turn here. And let's see, they're gonna refresh the dragons again, really <laughs> twice in a row. And then they're gonna add a silver coin to this area here. And they're gonna move one space on the guild track that puts them in the brown space. So we're gonna check at the bottom of this card. So first of all, they're gonna take dragon number two. So this one's gone. And then they're going to add an objective marker. All right, so this is how you add objective markers for the AI. Again, it has to have one available. And so the way it works, it says number two. So you're gonna count every empty row, starting with the first one. And wherever that count ends up with the number that matches on the card, that's where you're gonna place the token. You'll skip over any rows that are full. And if it has multiple spaces, you'll place it in the leftmost space. And so we count, this is number two, so one and then two. So it's gonna place it right here and that's it. And then of course we'll refill the dragons here. And then it's back to my turn. And now I do need some cave cards to you know expand a little bit. I could use this one, but it's not gonna help me unless I have resources, but I might use it anyways, we'll see. But in the meantime, I'm going to explore down here. And so it's gonna cost me a coin. The first explorer gives me a cave card, so I can choose any one of these I'd like. And being short on resources, I think I'll take this one here. And then we move on. It says I can cash a meat from my supply here if I do, or anytime I cash a meat, I gain gold. And when the third is cash, I also gain two cards. I'm not too worried about that right now. I, I don't even have any meat. So we move on and we gain on the guild. The guild's gonna move up and I'll gain another cave card. Again, these don't refresh until the end of my turn. So I can only choose from these two or the top of the deck. And I will definitely choose this one. This 
this one's really nice. Immediately play a card, a dragon card, with a discount of one egg or one resource. That's gonna be re really useful for me later. All right, so it is now the end of my turn. We will refresh these cards here and we'll move on to the AI's turn. And so we'll flip over a card here and the AI is gonna get rid of that coin and put on the objective earlier. And then it's gonna move up on the guild track. Again, looking at, we're round two now. It's only gonna move one space and that's gonna end its turn. All right, so back to my turn. And so I'm going to explore again. I'm gonna to go to this space here and that'll cost me a coin and then I will gain a dragon card and I think I will gain this one here. And then I get to move on to here, reveal a card from the deck. And let's see if it's uh, medium or large, I tuck it. So it is, so we'll tuck it under here. And then we'll move on to the next space, moving up the guild track, gaining a gem for that. And then we'll move on to the next space over here, gaining another card. And I think I'm gonna go with this one here. This one's nice because it, you know, it's free to play but it loses one point for each other aggressive dragon in this cave. And this cave refers to one of the rows. So if I place it up here, there are no aggressive dragons up here. So it wouldn't, I wouldn't lose any points. And what's nice about that is, you know, if I play it here, it's gonna extend my explore actions, getting me more resources. So that's kind of my plan there. All right, so that ends my exploration and we're gonna draw two new cards here and then we're gonna move on to the AI's turn. And so now we draw a card for the AI and all it's gonna do is move up on the guild track. Now it's gonna move the furthest space that I've excavated. I've only excavated twice, so one, two, and that's it. Then we move back on to my turn. Now I definitely need to excavate. I don't have a choice in the matter. And so we're gonna excavate into this red area here. And so it'll cost a coin, and I think I'm gonna do this one here. So this one's gonna gain me one meat and one gold. And again, we're excavating in the red area, not only to play these cards, but also to go for the objective. All right, so back to the AI's turn. And let's see, they're gonna move up on the guild track and it looks like just one space. So we're still good there. Now back to my turn, I only have one coin left, but check out what I'm gonna do here. So I am only gonna excavate once here, and this is gonna be great, I love this. So we excavate and we're gonna pl play this one here. So we're gonna play it to this space, which does cost me an egg because it's the third spot in the column, but I get to pay two resources, and then I gain one of these from the display and play it immediately for free. All right, so first of all, we'll spend the two resources, and I guess we'll go with these two here. All right, so now that I've done that, I get to take one, one from the display and play it for free. I'm gonna take this one here. Check this one out. When you play it, you gain a silver. And so I'm gonna play it in one of these areas. I, I probably should play it here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'll play it right there, and then I'll gain a silver coin. And that means I don't have, you know, I don't have to pass now. So I have one more action to do. I still have one resource, and I'm still gonna get to play this card. You'll see. All right, so now it's the AI's turn and then they're gonna get rid of any coins they have on the objective, they don't have any. They're gonna move up on the guild track. This time it's gonna be three because that's the max excavation I've done. So one, two, three. They passed a brown space, so they're gonna do the brown space action. They're gaining dragon number one, and I did forget to <laughs> refill these cards, sorry about that. And then uh, cave number one. They're adding those, again, that's gonna be just points to them. And then we're gonna replace two here, and then we're back to my turn. All right, so I'm gonna play this one and that's gonna guarantee that I'm gonna get that objective. So that's really good. But the way I'm gonna do it, I'm not gonna straight up entice it. Again, I don't have the resources for it. So I'm going to ex excavate. And so I can excavate with this one. It's gonna cost me a coin and I'll, I'll place it down here at the bottom, I think. And then I immediately play a card. All right, so we're gonna play this card here and it has a discount of one egg or one resource. Well, I'll discount the meat there, just playing the gold placing it right here, and yeah, that was great. Now I've extended my exploration action for this area here, so I'll gain two resources, and one on the guild. Actually, I'll gain a gold here too, which I can cash here if I want. So a lot going on there. On top of that, I have one, two, three, four cards in these spaces, which near guarantees that I'm gonna get that objective. All right, so that's the end of my turn. It's the AI's turn. We flip this over and they are passing. This was the last card. They're gonna pass and that's it. That's awesome. So we're moving on to the objective. Well, actually we need to discard the coins. So we're discarding all the coins. We're gonna put six over here, but this coin that I had gained earlier will just put back in the supply. We'll activate end of round effects. I don't have any. That's gonna, that's gonna hurt later because of this objective. I don't have any yet. I need to get at least one out, either end of round or instant, 
just so I can score second place. All right, so now we're gonna score objectives. And so the AI showing on this tile here has two, but I have four cards. Again, two dragons and two caves. And so, yeah, I totally win that objective. And so I'll get first place with the AI getting second place. Now we take the AI's new cube for the Dragon Guild, adding it here. We're gonna refresh the display here. I gain my six coins and one egg, and then we'll move the marker here, and then we'll reset the AI's deck. Again, drawing one card off the top, placing it in the discard, and then the rest of the cards here. All right, so we are ready to go. We got a lot of good things going on here. Now we're scoring playful dragons at the end of this round. I already have three, so I'm really set up there. I don't know that I need any more. I guess we'll kind of see as we go, but I don't even have any, so let's see what else I want to do. Now before I do anything, I want to move up on that guild track. I want to have some good options here as far as scoring goes, or maybe even gaining a coin and a couple dragons. So I need to explore one of these in order to gain the guild movement, and I'm not sure which one I want to do. I should probably do the top one because I need resources. So we'll explore the top one, cost a coin, we'll gain a resource. I think I'll gain a gold, and then we'll move on to the next base here, moving up on the guild track, placing one of these, and I think I'll go with the coin and the two dragons. So we gain one more coin here, and then two dragons. Oh my goodness, I just realized these three dragons here all have that ability that, you know, compares you to another player left of you. And so all of these get discarded. <laughs> that is really strange that they all happen that way. And so there's some really good choices here. We have this one here. It's free to play. It's playful. Actually, all three of these are playful. So some really good ones. Oh, I also like this one. This one's really good. And so I think I'm going to take this one. And I'm tempted to take this one. This one has an end game scoring eight points if you have a hatchling, small dragon, and large dragon in this cave. And so I'd probably want to place it up here, but I'd have to make sure that I got a, you know, a, a hatchling in this area. And there are some hatchlings that go in this cave, but I haven't seen any, or you know, maybe they were discarded earlier, so I don't know, that's kind of risky. Or I go with that free one. Oh, that's a tough call. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> I'm just gonna go for it. We'll go for that one. And so we're moving on. I can gain a gold and I may cash it here. And so I'll gain this gold. Do I wanna cash it or do I wanna hold on to it? I probably wanna hold on to it for now. Yeah, we'll skip the caching. Then we'll move on, gaining another resource of my choice. And so I'll get a meat here. All right, so that's gonna end my turn. Now it's the AI's turn, let's see what they do. And they're gonna refresh the card, so there they go. Then they're gonna add a coin to the objective, and then they're gonna move two spaces on the guild. All right, so one, two. All right, so I'm gonna explore the Crimson Cavern one more time. That'll cost a coin, and this time it'll also cost an egg, and so we'll place it right there. And so I'll gain a resource, and the first resource I want is a crystal. And then we move on, moving up on the guild track, gaining an egg, placing it right here. And then I gain a gold and I can cash it there. I'm gonna still hold on to the gold. The reason why I'm holding on to these resources, I'll probably turn them in when I excavate these spaces, that way I can get an extra coin. And then last, I gain another resource and I think I'll gain another gem. All right, so that's it for my turn. Moving on to the AI's turn, and they're gonna get rid of that coin from the objective, and then they're gonna move three spaces up on the guild track. They've reached a brown space. They're gonna gain card number one and card number one. All right, so more points for them. All right, so back to my turn. I wanna entice a dragon this time, so we're gonna entice the custodial koi worm into this space here. It's gonna cost me a meat and a crystal. And then I get to gain two resources, keep one and cash one. And so I'll gain a meat, and so I keep a meat, and then I'm gonna cash a meat onto the miniature Rex here. And so when I cash it here, I gain a gold. And hopefully I can get the third one, but I'm not too concerned about that. But it was nice to be able to cash that there. It's gonna be worth a point. Back to the AI's turn. And so all they're doing is moving up on the guild track. Again, it'll be three. So one, two, and three. Back to my turn. And since I'm low on cave cards, I'm gonna explore the Amethyst Abyss. And so I'll gain a cave card from the display here. And so I'll gain this one here. And then we're moving on. I can cash a meat from my supply onto here. I'm not sure if I wanna do that. Well, you know what? You know, I'll, I'll just do it. So a meat, and then for cashing there, I'll gain a gold. And then we move on, moving up the guild track, <laughs> gaining another gold. Look at this, I'm swimming in gold here. And then we move on to gaining another cave card. And this one looks really good for me, so I'm gonna take that one. All right, so that ends my explorer action. We're drawing two new cave cards. I'm moving on to the AI's turn, drawing their card. And so they're gonna add a coin to the objective, and then they're gonna move one space on the guild track, and that's gonna end their turn. 
And so for this turn, I'm going to explore the Golden Grotto. That'll cost me a coin. And then I'm gonna gain a card. And I think I'm just gonna draw a card from the top of the deck. So let's see what we get. We got the Steely Fey. It goes in the middle area, which is fine. Actually, it has an instant ability of play a dragon from the display for free. Oh my goodness, this card is awesome. <laughs> so that'll be really good. And then we reveal a card from the deck. If it's medium or large, tuck it. Otherwise, I take it. It's medium, so it gets tucked under here. Then we move up on the guild track. So I'm gonna gain another dragon card. I'll take it from the top of the deck. And let's see, Tranquil Worm. So this one likes to have a lot of eggs on it. You can pay a silver to lay three eggs. Uh, that's not gonna be useful for me. I'll probably end up, uh, you know, getting rid of that card. And so then we move on to gaining another dragon. So we're gonna draw another card here and let's see. And so the Mosaic Guardian, it does cost a coin to play and a bunch of resources. It's worth six points, but it, uh, you know, it gains two points for each large dragon on my player mat. Now I only have one, so that might not be worth it either. So I'll probably get rid of that one too, but that's gonna end my turn. And so we're gonna move on to the AI's turn. And so we're gonna draw a card. Let's see, it, it's gonna add another coin to this. All right, so now it's at three for the playful and I have four, so we're still good there. Then it's gonna gain in the guild based off of my minimum excavated cave, so that's two, but it still ends up in a brown space. And so we move on, so it's gonna gain the number two cards from the display, adding it to its score pile. All right, so for my turn, I'm going to excavate, and so that'll cost me a coin. I'm going to excavate into this space here. It'll cost me two eggs on top of that, but I'll use this one here, laying it here. That'll give me a meat and a gem. Now do note that I have nine resources at this point. If I gain any more resources, I will have to discard down to nine. So do keep that in mind. I'm also at seven cards here. So getting really close. Again, that happens at the end of every turn. But on top of you know playing this card into this fourth spot, I get to discard up to three resources and cards, any combination to gain one coin. You can only do this once when you lay down the card. And so I definitely wanna do that. I think I'm gonna get rid of some of those cards yeah, this one costs a coin. I really don't want it. I don't like the cost of it. And I think I'll get rid of this one too, so that's two, and then we'll use one gold for the rest, and that gives me one coin. All right, so now it's the AI's turn. They're gonna get rid of one coin on the objective, so now I don't have to worry. They're gonna move two spaces on the guild track, and that's gonna end their turn. So I'm gonna hedge my bets and entice, placing this card into this space here. I hope this is the right call. It's either gonna help me win this game or I'm gonna lose completely. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I bet you I lose off of that. <laughs> then we go back to the AI's turn. Let's see if they have a turn. No, they're gonna pass. So that ends for them. I still have one coin to decide what I'm gonna do. And I think I'm gonna save that coin. Yeah, I'm gonna let that coin roll over. This is probably the first time I've let a coin roll over. So I'm gonna pass as well. And so now we discard all the coins and the eggs I used for payment on the uh, explorers. I'm gonna end up gaining six coins. So we'll add six coins over here. So I'll have seven coins going in, which is nice. Then we activate any end of round effects. I don't have any. Then we're gonna score for the objective here. He has uh, two and I have four. Five, five, <laughs> so it really worked out. So I'm really, really doing well on the objectives. I'm staying ahead of the AI. That's a lot of points. The AI only has five points on the objectives so far, and I have 15. Then we're gonna give the AI another one of its cubes. It's really weird that it has three cubes stocked up here. I, I haven't seen that before, so that's kind of strange. And then on top of that, we're gonna refresh all the cards and gain one egg. And then we're gonna reset the AI's deck. Again, after shuffling, drawing the first card into the discard pile and then putting the deck next to it. And then now it's my turn. All right, so what am I gonna do? See, I need some dragons. I definitely need some dragons. None of these look good to me, I don't think. I also need to excavate this space as well. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is explore into the Golden Grotto because that's where I gain some dragon cards. It's also gonna move me up on the guild, which will give me another silver coin. So I'm gonna have a lot of coins, so that's really good. So we're gonna draw a card from the top of the deck. Let's see what I get. And it's a medium dragon, costs a coin and a gem. Yep, I don't like this at all, <laughs> so that's, that's not good. And so then we get to reveal a card from the deck and we're hoping for a hatchling from the top of the deck, so we'll see. No, it's a medium, so it gets tucked underneath. It's still an extra point at the end of the game, so that's not bad. And then we're gonna move on to this next one, moving up on the guild, gaining another coin, still lots of coins. And then we move on, gaining another dragon card. And so we'll draw the top card here. 
Oh, check it out. It is a hatchling. Ooh. It only costs one milk and one egg, and it goes in that top spot. That is going to score me so much points. That is awesome. That is awesome. All right, so that ends our explorer. Again, the stop sign here, even if there's a cave card, you can't move past that stop sign. It has to be a dragon here. And so we're done there. And we draw our first AI card of the round. I did forget to move this round marker. We're in the final round here. All right. So now it's gonna move on the guild track, and this is a total of four spaces because I've fully excavated a cave. So four spaces into this space here, and it's gonna gain the third card, and then it's going to add one of its tokens in the fourth spot. So one, you skip this one because it's full, two, three, and four. Boom, it got six points, just like that. And then we refresh the display here, and look, there's another hatchling. Oh, that one costs a lot though but it's worth six points. Ooh, oh, check that out. Check that out, this is awesome. All right, so I can play this one. This is my turn, right? I can play this one. So we're gonna entice, playing this one into this space here. It cost me two gold and a gem, which I already had, which is really awesome. And then I get to pay a dragon, so I get to discard a dragon. We'll discard this dragon here to play one from the display for free. We'll play this one into this space. Oh man, do you know how many points I just got off of that? Six points here, plus the eight points here because I need a hatchling, small dragon, and large dragon in this cave. I have a hatchling, small, and large. Check that out, that is awesome. I just love those combos when you're able to you know, like play card for free and you get all those bonuses, it's just awesome. All right, so we're drawing a new card here. Back to the AI's turn, let's see what they get. And they're gonna add a token to this space, the objective. Now this objective, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. So it requires cards with instant abilities or you know end of round effects. And I think I only have one. Yeah, I only have one. No, I have two. So at least I'll be on the board. So I'll get second place at least. So that's gonna be four points. That's not too bad, I guess. On top of that, they're going to move up twice on the guild track, so one and two, and that's it. All right, so I do need to excavate at this point. I, I don't have any spaces left. I don't want to excavate here just yet, but I might excavate down here. I do need to fill this out, though, for this bonus. Gain five points if you have four dragons in your golden grotto. So I definitely want to, you know, put something here. But I should look at, you know, some other way of generating cards or, you know, cave cards and that sort of thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first explore up here. That's gonna cost me a coin. I'll gain a resource, so we're gonna gain meat. And then I will move over here to move up on the guild, gaining a milk. And then I will move here, gaining a gold, and I can cash it there. At this point, I think it's probably best if I cash it there. That extra point might win me the game. And so we're moving on, I gain another resource. I think I will gain meat again. And then we're moving over here, I get to lay an egg. And I have lots of spaces for eggs. I haven't gained a lot of eggs, so this is gonna hurt me in the end. And then here, I get to tuck a card from my hand here. And so I think I'll tuck this one. Anytime you tuck here, I get to lay a, an egg. And so that's pretty awesome. And so we'll just place it right here. And then I get to move on to this space here. This is the fourth space. I get to cash up to two of any resources from my supply onto any dragons. Ooh, this is not bad. So what I could do here is I could cash these two meat onto the miniature Rex down here. And so for the miniature Rex, it's going to give me two gold for that. So I gained those. And then it was, I got the third one on here. So I gained two cards. And I think I'll just take them from the top of the deck. And so let's see what we get. Well, this isn't too bad, actually. Actually, this isn't too bad at all. So this one here, it does cost a coin and a bunch of resources, but it gives three points for each hatchling on my player mat. Now at this point here, I have one and two hatchlings. I'm likely gonna get uh, you know, this hatchling out as well. So I could get maximum points for that. And for this one, it, it gives me more points than that one. So uh, yeah, I'll probably use it. Now, of course, I didn't get any cave cards. So I'm definitely gonna need cave cards. Let's see if we can plan this out to where I can get most of these cards out, maybe even fill out the mat. I, I don't think I have enough actions for that, but we'll see what happens. All right, so now it's the AI's turn. And so they're gonna get rid of the coin on their objective, and then they're gonna move one space, just one space. That is good, because I'm gonna try and move up on the guild again, we'll see. All right, so back to my turn. I think I'm gonna excavate. I do have one cave, so let's go ahead and excavate, and I think I'm gonna place it probably down here. And so on this one, I can pay 
an egg up to three times I can do this, pay an egg to gain two resources. So we're gonna pay one egg for sure because I need a couple resources here. I have one milk here, but I do need a, a meat and a gem. So let's just do that once. I don't wanna pay any more eggs. It's gonna cost me too many resources. So let's not do that. Now it did also cost me an egg to excavate in this area. So we'll take one more egg there because the third column takes one extra egg. All right, back to the AI's turn, let's see. All right, so they're gonna refresh the dragon display, which is no big deal. I don't think I need any more dragons, but they are adding a coin to the objective. And then they're gonna move three spaces on here. They're gonna gain the second dragon card, and then they're gonna add one of their tokens two spaces down. So one, two, into this space right here. All right, so back to my turn. I'm going to explore this time. We'll explore the bottom here. And so I'll gain a cave card. I'm not sure which one I want, probably this one. Yeah, I'll gain this one. And then I can cash a meat here. I'm not gonna do that, we'll skip that. And then I will move up on the guild track. That'll give me one token to place and I'll place it right here for that end game scoring of three points for every filled column of dragons. So a column like so, up and down. And I'll fill in this one here. So I'll definitely get nine points out of that. So it was so worth it. And then we'll move on over to here, gaining another cave card. Uh, I think I'll just take one off the top of the deck and see what I get. Nothing big, it just gives me a resource and an egg, but that's gonna end my turn. And so we're gonna move back on to the AI's turn. Let's see what he does. And so let's see, they're gonna refresh the dragons again. And then they're gonna move four spaces on the guild track, like so, and that's gonna end their turn. All right, so we're, we have three coins. We need to excavate once or twice. All right, let's see if we can pull this off here. I don't think I can fill out this board. I, I don't think that's gonna happen, but I could excavate one more time here. I definitely need to, so that's what we're gonna do. We'll pay the excavation cost and we'll excavate this one here. It does take my last two eggs, so good thing I had those. And so on this card here, it says I can gain two different benefits. So it is dragon card, guild movement, cave card, and resource. And then each opponent gains one benefit of their choice. Of course, this doesn't happen for the AI. So I need to choose two different ones there. And so I'll move up on the guild. That'll gain me an egg because I have no eggs. And then I'll gain a resource of my choice. I really don't think it matters, but I guess I'll gain the meat. But on top of that, because we're placing in the fourth column here, I'm gonna spend three things to make sure that I, I get that extra coin. Now, I don't need one of these dragons here, so we'll get rid of one. And I probably don't need this one at this point because I'm just not gonna have enough action. So that's two. Although I can, I can just get rid of resources here because that's all I need to worry about. All right, so we'll get rid of those. I'll gain an extra coin. And so we're hoping I can put out two more cards, two more cards. It's gonna cost an extra coin on this one and then this one here. I think I can do this, this is great. All right, back to the AI's turn. And so they're gonna place one more coin on the objective. So they're definitely gonna win that objective. There's just no chance for me with that one. They're gonna move two spaces on the guild track. Oh boy. That means that they're gonna gain more cards. This is not good. Each time they gain two cards like that, a cave card and a dragon card, that's nine points. All right, so back to my turn. I need to do some enticing. So we're gonna entice, and then we're gonna place this dragon into this space here. It's gonna cost me a coin and then a meat, a gold, and a gem. All right, so that's gonna give me a ton of points at the end of the game. We just need to place this hatchling and then we're good to go. Back to the AI's turn. And let's see, they do have a final action. They're gonna get rid of one of those objective tokens. They're gonna move up on the guild track. One, two, three, four. But that means they're not gonna actually, you know, gain any more. They're not gonna place their last token. I've never seen that happen, but that's great. Back to my final turn here. Here we go. I'm gonna entice one last time. We're gonna entice the Redwood Lung Dragon into this bottom area here. It's gonna cost me my only egg <laughs> and one milk, and that's it. <laughs> that is it. All right, so we do you know, move on to checking to see if we activate any end of round effects. Don't have any, we're gonna score the objective. Now the AI has a coin plus the two that they get from the tile itself. So they have a total of three of those kinds of dragons and I have one, two, and that's it, that's it. All right, so I get second place, the AI gets first. I can't, I guess I can't get them all. But you know, at least I placed because you know, if they had got seven points and I didn't place, that would have been awful. All right, so then we're gonna go on to end of game scoring. So we'll have the AI in the first column and me in the second column. And so the first thing that we're gonna look at is markers on the Dragon Guild. Now, in the Ravel mode, the AI scores these. 
In the normal mode, they don't. But since we're in the rabble mode, they're gonna score. So any of them where they have points, they're gonna score it. And it's only the ones that have the fixed victory points. So the ones with the end game scoring, like the one that I scored here, the AI wouldn't score any points if they had placed a marker there. But they're gonna get six points there. But me, however, I'm gonna get nine points. I have three filled columns here. So that was well worth it. So I'm already ahead on the AI. Now for the AI, we're gonna count all these cards. It's gonna get seven points for each of these cards. There are eight cards total. That is a lot of points. That is 56 points. That is not good for me, but we'll see. And now I get to count my printed victory point value as shown in the upper right hand corner of all these cards. And I have a total of 40. I know it's not as much as the AI, but 40 is still a decent amount. And then the AI is going to get two points for every cave card they have. They have five here, so that's gonna be 10 points. But then I get points for my end game, you know, bonuses that are on the dragons. Now this one I don't get because it wanted to be between two dragons and it's, you know, the, there's not one next to it there. But this one gives me eight points. This one gives me five points. And this one gives me nine points. So that's 22 points, not too shabby. And then the AI gets one point for every step away from the last brown space. So one, two, three, four. So the AI is gonna get four points. And then I get points for eggs and tuck cards and cached resources. I don't have a whole lot here. So no eggs, check that out. That is the first time I ended up with no eggs. We have five cached resources, four meat and one gold there. So that's five points. And then tuck cards, I don't have a lot either. So I have one over here. And then a three here, I guess that's it. All right, so four points there. And now we're gonna go on to the completed objectives here. So you just count up the points here. The AI is gonna get a total of 12 points, but I really got way more points here. So we got 10, 19 points. That is a good gain on the AI. And then last but not least, you count up your cards and resources, divide that total by four. You'll get a point each for those, and you also get a point each for any leftover coins. I don't know why you would have any, but you would. And so I only get one point for those four things there left over. All right, so we'll total that score. And it looks like I have an even 100 against the AI's 88. 100 to 88, I have one against the AI. It's time for me to level up. <laughs> it's time for me to move on to the higher difficulty because there are more difficulties. And at Revo level three, the AI actually scores eight points per card for the dragon card. So it gets extra points there, but also the deck is harder to use. And so, yeah. It gets to be more difficult the higher you go, but it's time for me to move on to level two. And so there you have it. That was the tutorial and solo playthrough of Wormspan by Connie Vogelman and Stonemeyer Games. This is a game that I have just had a blast with. I've played it six times now, have enjoyed every single time. Every time I feel like I'm getting better, I know I had some suboptimal plays early on, but it turns out, man, I had some great plays towards the end that helped me get to the 100 point mark. That was such a great game. I'm glad I was able to do that. I just had a blast playing, and I'm glad I was able to show the game to you here. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of this game. Now, I, I do want to let you know, you're going to ask me, how does it compare to Wingspan? I actually have never played Wingspan, so I don't know. But it does play differently than Wingspan as they have a little blurb in the rule book that tells you the differences between the two. But let me know in the comments below what you thought of this game, what you thought of my playthrough. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank my Patreons for supporting this channel. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.